I'm going to start this class with a little joke. One day, a man was sitting and watching television, and there was a knock at the door. Knock, knock, knock. So the man got up, and he went to the door and opened it, and there, sitting on the doormat, is a snail. The man doesn't understand. He picks up the snail, and he throws the snail as far as possible. Three years later, the man was sitting and watching television again, and there was another knock at the door. Knock, knock, knock. So he goes to the door and opens it, and there's the snail. And the snail says, what did you do that for? <laughs> now, I guarantee that at the end of this class, you're going to come back and listen to this joke again but not because it's a particularly funny joke, but because you're going to pay special attention to the tenses I used when I told it. Hello and welcome to Kangaroo English. I'm Christian. And today we are going to be talking about the verbal tense that you probably didn't even know existed. And this verbal tense is the key to telling a really good story in English. I want you to think about all of the conversations that you had today. And think about the content of those conversations. You'll probably discover that a majority of those conversations included you telling a story about what somebody said or something that happened to you an hour ago, a week ago, or maybe even 10 years ago. Talking about the past and telling stories is an essential part of using language. And if you want to tell a really good story, then you need to use this mysterious verbal tense called the historical present. Now, maybe you have heard of the historical present. Maybe you have even been taught how to use the historical present. But unfortunately, there is a lot of misinformation about how to use and why we use this verbal tense. But in this class, I'm going to tell you the real reason why we use the historical present, and I'm going to show you how you can use it to tell a really great story. Before we can talk about the historical present, we need to look at the typical story structure in English, which has four parts. So, we begin with the abstract, which is a short summary of, of what happened. Then we have the orientation. When did it happen? Where did it happen? Then we have a complicating action, something which is bad or good, which happens to complicate the story. And finally, the coda, which is the result or resolution of the complicating action. So, imagine that you went to the supermarket yesterday to buy some milk, but when you arrived at the checkout to pay, you discovered that you didn't have any money. So, the way that you would tell the story might be like this. Abstract. Oh my God, the most embarrassing thing happened to me. You're giving a short summary of the story, an embarrassing thing happened. Orientation. So, yesterday I was at the supermarket. Okay, good. Now we have our complicating action. And I had my milk and I went to the till to pay and I looked in my purse and I didn't have any money. So, as a result, I had to leave the supermarket and, oh my God, I was super embarrassed. So this is a typical story structure in English. Now, normally, we only use the historical present in one part of the story structure. And that, that is here during the complicating action. It's very unusual to use the historical present 
in the abstract or orientation or coda. And now I'm going to show you how to use the historical present here to tell a really great story. So let's take our supermarket story and let's add some more detail. So I went to the fridge and I got the milk. I walked to the checkout. I waited in the line. The girl at the checkout, boop, she scanned the milk. And then I looked in my purse and I had no money. So I put the milk back. Now, as you can see, I have written this story all in the past simple. And normally when you're telling a story in the past, you use the past tenses, past perfect, past simple, past continuous. But if you want, you can also use the historical present. It basically means that at some points in the story, you can use present simple or present continuous when you're talking about an event in the past. And the question is, why would you want to do that? The reason we use the historical present actually has nothing to do with time. Obviously, all of these events happened in the past. The reason we use the historical present is to help the listener to evaluate the story better. As the linguist Deborah Schifrin explains, when we use only past tenses, we are presenting the story as an external evaluation device. I'm telling you the story and this is the story. You are external. But when I use the historical present, I'm actually offering you the opportunity to internally evaluate what's happening, to experience the story as if you were there. It becomes an internal evaluation device. And mainly we use it to separate events and to highlight really important events in the story. So if we go back to our, our supermarket story here, maybe I would decide that a really shocking change in the story, a turn of events, something which I really want you to experience is here. This moment when I look in my purse and I realized that I have no money. So what you can do is you can use present simple or present continuous in this part of the story to highlight this part, to separate it from the other events and to help you to feel how important it is as part of my embarrassing supermarket story. So I might say, I walked to the fridge and got milk and then I walked to the checkout and I waited in the line for, for 10 minutes and then the, the cashier, she, she took the milk and she scanned the milk and now we're going to switch to present simple. And then I look in my purse and I see that I have no money. Maybe a little bit of present continuous. Remember, present continuous indicates that all of these things are happening in this moment. Okay, so when I use present continuous in the past, I'm saying that all of these things are happening at the same time. So, I'm looking in my purse and I'm thinking, oh my God, how am I going to pay for this shopping? And the cashier is looking at me and I'm looking at my purse. And now because putting the milk back is a resolution to the action, we're going to switch back to, to past simple. So I, I said to her, I'm really sorry. And I put the milk back. Once you realize that the historical present exists, you will start to see it and hear it everywhere. And you will notice that normally when native speakers are telling a story, they will switch 
back and forth during the complicating action between past and present, like this. And it's a really powerful tool to help you to create suspense and interest when you're telling a story. But it is powerful, so be careful. You must only use it in very limited quantities. If you use it all the time, then like anything, it loses its power. But don't be afraid to experiment because it's a fantastic way to bring the other people into your story. Well, I hope that you found this class interesting. And now your job is to go and use the historical present and write a really fantastic story. Why don't you share it with me? Send me an email, post it on the Facebook group, record it as a video on Instagram. I want to see you guys using the historical present to tell a really great story. This video today was made possible by all of my fantastic patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much. And if you would like to see any more videos about the English language, then don't forget to subscribe. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class.